So where there's horizontal, there must also be vertical. Horizontal asymptotes occur if y goes to k as x goes to plus or minus infinity. But what if we switch things around? What if x goes to h when y goes to plus or minus infinity? In this case, we obtain a vertical asymptote. So we might try to describe the end behavior as y goes to infinity in y equals 1 over x. Now, let's try and rearrange our equation to make the analysis a little bit easier. From y equals 1 over x, we'll multiply through by the denominator x, and that gives us y x equals 1. Now, we know y is going to infinity, so we'd like to be able to say something about x, so let's solve for x by dividing by y, and that tells us that x is equal to 1 over y. As y goes to plus or minus infinity, x is going to be 1 divided by a very large positive or negative number, which means that x is going to go to 0. And so we might summarize, as y goes to plus or minus infinity, x goes to 0. So this tells us that x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote. Generally speaking, we're given an equation for y, and it's not easy to solve that equation for x. But remember what we're looking at. If our graph has our points going to some specific value of x as y goes to plus or minus infinity, then we can read this as follows. Either as y goes to plus or minus infinity, x goes to h, but also we could read this as x goes to h, y goes to plus or minus infinity. And this leads to the following important idea. If x going to a makes y go to plus or minus infinity, then x equals a is a vertical asymptote. Let's introduce some more adjectives. Another useful adjective is slightly more or slightly less. We'll use a superscript plus to indicate slightly more than a and a superscript minus to indicate slightly less than a. And by this notation, we can now consider what happens as x goes to a, but always stays slightly more than a. We sometimes say that x is going to a from above. And likewise, we can consider what happens as x goes to a, but stays slightly less than a, which we call from below. And one very important thing to remember, the plus and minus in our notation has nothing to do with the sign of a. So let's try to describe the behavior of y equals 1 over x minus 3 as x goes to 3 but stays slightly more than 3, and as x goes to 3 but stays slightly less than 3. So remember the first thing we should do any time we have any rational function is to identify the forbidden values. And so here our denominator is x minus 3, so we require x not equal to 3. So suppose we let x go to 3 from above. Remember this means that x is a number that's around 3, but it's a little bit more than 3. So let's unpack our adjectives. If x is getting close to 3 but staying slightly more than 3, x minus 3 will get close to 0 but stay slightly more than 0. So we'll indicate that using a superscripted plus. Now 0 plus is a small positive number. It's small because it's close to 0, and it's positive because it's slightly more than 0. So this means that 1 over x minus 3 will be a large positive number. So this means that as x gets close to 3 from above, 1 over x minus 3 goes to infinity. But equals means replaceable. So if we know what 1 over x minus 3 is doing, we also know what y is doing. And so we can say that as x gets close to 3 from above, y goes to infinity. On the other side, if we let x get close to 3 from below, in other words, we're going to let x get close to 3 but stay slightly less than 3, then x minus 3 gets close to 
0, but it stays slightly less than 0. So that's a small negative number. And so 1 over x minus 3 will be a large negative number. So as x gets close to 3 from below, 1 over x minus 3 goes to minus infinity. Equals means replaceable, so y goes to minus infinity. So remember, a vertical asymptote is going to occur for any value of x that makes y go to plus or minus infinity. So that says that x equals 3 is a vertical asymptote. This suggests the following idea. Suppose we have a rational function where we've reduced it as much as possible. The asymptotes of the graph of y equals f of x will occur at x equals a, where q of a is equal to 0. In other words, they're going to occur at places that make the rational function undefined. So let's see if we can find the asymptotes of this rational function. And whether or not you're looking for asymptotes, the first thing we should always do is to find where the rational expression is undefined. And those will be places that make the denominator equal to 0. So we'll solve. And we find that x equals 1 or 4 are solutions. So we require x cannot be equal to 1. x cannot be equal to 4. Next, we'll try to simplify. We can hope to cancel, but remember, you can only cancel if both numerator and denominator are products. So this means we'll have to factor. Since we know the roots of x squared minus 5x plus 4, we know that it has to factor as x minus 4 times x minus 1. And then we can factor our numerator. And we can try to simplify. Since x equals 1 makes the denominator of the reduced expression equal to 0, then x equals 1 will correspond to a vertical asymptote. And we might summarize our work. In simplified form, our rational expression is y equals x plus 1 over x minus 1, still for x not equal to 1, x not equal to 4. And since x equals 1 makes the denominator of our reduced expression equal to 0, there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. One important idea to keep in mind, while we still have to require x can't be 1, x can't be 4, only x equal to 1 gives us a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptotes only depend on the simplified form. Now you might wonder what happened to that x equal to 4. In order to answer that question, you'll have to take calculus.